Welcome to RWM Blue Water Ministry. I'm your host Bob Manuk and today's message is called God's Blessings. And uh, the first scripture we're going to read is Matthew 5, 43 to 45. And this is this is Jesus teaching the Beatitudes. And he says, You have heard the law that says, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, Love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. So, in the first two verses, he says, You have heard the law that says, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. You know what? I, I tell you. In our natural life, uh, we can do that very easily. We, I mean, we, we will love our family. We will love those people close to us, our friends. And But, you know what? Hating our enemies, if there's somebody who offends us, uh, hating them, that takes no effort at all. We, we can react that way very easily, and that, that would be, in our natural life, that is just simply the way we would live. But Jesus is calling us to something higher. He says, I say, love your enemies. Whoa, whoa, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not so easy. Because what he's calling us to is something higher. Uh, it's not just an easy, don't do anything, don't try, uh, just respond to your, your natural responses. Those things are easy. What he's calling for when he says, love your enemies, and he says, Pray for those who persecute you. He's calling us higher. He says, start caring for these people because that's what Jesus did. That's, that, that's consistent with God's nature. God loves everybody. And, uh, and so Jesus now, uh, you know, make the distinction that the law, when he said the law says, I mean, this is back when Moses gave, and, and understanding people's natural lives, and he says, the law was given so we'd be conscious of sin. But Jesus said, but the intent of it all is that we love. We love our enemies. Pray for those who persecute us. He's calling us to something higher that requires effort and it requires discipline. Uh, he says, in that way you'll be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. Now, uh, the next verse, he says, for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. So, the title of the message today is God's Blessings. And uh, what I want to point out to you is there's, there's a, a couple of levels of God's blessings. Um, there is what, what I'm going to call the common blessing. The common blessing uh, that falls upon all mankind. When God created the heavens and the earth, uh, he embedded in it certain blessings. The sun shines on everybody. The rain comes and shines and, and wets everything. Uh, the farmers who have fields, it doesn't matter if you are a believer or an unbeliever, you get your sunlight, you get your rain. God has done this because he has unfailing love for everybody. And we see that uh, in John 3.16 where the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever uh, would believe on him Jesus died on the cross and paid the penalty for all sin. He didn't just pay for the sins of the people who believe in him, but he paid for everybody's sins. Everybody. For God so loved the world. So there's a common blessing that is upon everybody. And, uh, and so imagine this. If, if, if we look at your home or a building and it rains, I mean, what you're going to see is you don't just have one part of your roof wet and the other part dry. Like, it rains uh, in your area. It rains on, on everything and everybody. And to me, that's part of the common blessing. Everything gets wet. But I want to point out to you, like, when the rain hits the roof and it starts running downhill, it comes down the valleys, it comes down and hits your eaves troughs. Once it hits the eaves troughs, it's collecting, 
and it starts following the slope down. So suddenly now you've got a current heading down and at the lowest part of the east trough there will be a downspout. And that downspout f goes down and suddenly when you go out there like, it is pouring out of the downspout onto the ground. So you've got a flow. It starts off wetting the roof but as it clacks and it comes down to a place and it pours out of the downspout. God's blessings is much the same way, okay? Because God's blessings, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. It rains on everything and everybody. And then it comes down, but then there's a flow collecting. But then, then there's a place where God's blessings pours out in a certain location. And so when we saw in that scripture, when it says, you know, I mean... <laughs> Love, love your neighbors, hate your enemies. That's easy. That's an easy thing to do. But when you start doing what Jesus said, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. He's calling for something higher. And what he's requiring you to do is, is you need, to, you can't just stay where you are in your natural being. You need to adjust yourself. You need to slide over. There is a place, there is a place where God's blessings is pouring out. But it's not at this place with a common blessing. It's a special blessing. There's a special blessing at, that comes out at a certain place. And you are required to adjust yourself to get to that location where God's blessings are going to pour out upon you. So that is the essence of the message. There's a common blessing that is upon everything that requires nothing of you. <clears throat> but then... There's a special blessing that does require something. And this is a prime example. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. You are called to something higher. You are called to something that's going to require effort. And it's going to require an adjustment on your part to go to that location where God's blessing is. The other scripture we're going to look at. James 1 verse 25. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard then God will bless you for doing it now again you know what <laughs> you can hear the word preached you can read the Bible you can get the word uh, you can be exposed to the word of God um but it says, if you do what it says, if, it, if you do what it says, God will bless you for doing it. Understand what I'm saying? Part of the common blessing is you may hear the word, and that's part of the common blessing. You'll hear it. But unless you do it, the blessing is when you do it. Again, requires effort, requires you to adjust yourself to get to a place where God has set the standard and raised the bar, says, you do these things. Uh, when you read the word and you do it, there's blessing in it. And it has to do with obedience to what your, the revelation that's coming to you from the word of God. Obedience. God will bless you for doing it. Another scripture we'll look at. Luke 11, verse 28. Jesus replied, But even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. So again, this, this kind of lines up with the last verse when it says when you hear the word, it's not just hearing it, you got to do it. Uh, and this, this is, take it one step further, put it into practice. So if you're in, a, in an environment where you are around other people, uh, whether it's, let's say if you're in a cafeteria and somebody sits down at the table and there's a group of you and somebody says something and that annoys you a little bit. Well, our natural reaction might be angry, or it might be to just feel offended, and it might be whatever, and, and it, that doesn't take effort. That's an easy reaction. That's just a natural reaction. That happens. But when Jesus says, love your enemies, bless those who persecute you, pray for those who annoy you, uh, he's calling us higher. He's calling us to stand up where we are walking with the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, where we have love, joy, peace, 
he's asking us to don't just do a natural reaction, but have discipline. So when he says here, he says, it's not just those who hear the word, but put it into practice. So what that really means is, when he says, pray for those who persecute you, that's great if you do it. And if you do it once, you do it twice. But now, uh, it's not, the last scripture we, we read, it said, you hear the word and then you do it. Here it's using the word practice it. Practice it. It, it means not once. It means let it become a natural reaction. Uh, the word says, be no longer conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you start doing this over and over, and you just make it a habit, this is my practice. When somebody offends me, I'm going to ignore it, and I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to, I'm going to bless people. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to show them kindness. I am going to rise up to a spiritual level. I'm not going to react through my natural man, through the flesh. Uh, I'm not going to just have my natural reaction pop up and uh, react to somebody. I'm, I, I don't want to be that person who uh, is suddenly offended and angry at somebody because I didn't like what they said. The words call me to love my enemies, pray for those who persecute me, bless those who offend me, like just rise up to a higher level and put it into practice. We're going to look at uh, Malachi 3, uh, verses 10 to 12. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament, and it was written about 400 years before the birth of Christ. But here's what it says. Now, in this particular verse, it's talking about money, and, and the essence here isn't so much the money, although we could preach a message on that, but what I'm talking, what, what I'm going to focus in on here is the aspect of the obedience. Verse 10, chapter 3, verse 10 of Malachi. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great, you won't have enough room for it to take it in. And there's, there's, there's a little bit more I'm going to read here, but I just want to point that out. Imagine, imagine heaven with all the riches of heaven. And God says, I'm going to open up a window, and I'm going to pour out on you. If you do these things, I will pour out on you such a blessing. And that's what it's saying here. There's a location, and this is the whole point of what I'm saying. There's a common blessing. There's a common blessing that you don't need to do anything. You will have sunshine, and you will have rain. That's the common blessing that's embedded into a creation. But if you want the special blessing, if you want windows in heaven to open up and pour out upon you blessings... There are certain things required. You are going to be called to rise up to a higher level. Here it's talking about the tithe. And it goes on to say, <clears throat> I'll open up the windows of heaven for you. I'll pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. And this is the only place in the whole Bible that I'm aware of where God says, test me in this. Your crops will be abundant for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fail from, uh, fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord. He is, in this particular case, <coughs> he's talking about bringing the tithe into the church. And he's saying, but if you do this, and this is what I'm for, there's a special blessing. I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings. It comes down to some of what I'm talking about as far as this downspout where there's the blessings just pour out. There's a place. There's a place where there's special blessing. But you are going to need to do more. It'll take effort and it'll take an adjustment on your part to get into the place where God can bless you that way. Uh, you can't just take the easy way and not move. You can't just, if you just stay where you are and make no adjustments, then you will experience the common blessing that, that falls on everybody, on the righteous and the unrighteous. But if you want that special blessing of God, you're going to be required to have to exercise some effort and to start adjusting yourself to line up with God's Word and His blessings will come upon you. So, next verse. Hebrews 11, 6. And 
And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to come back to common blessing. There's nothing required to receive the common blessing. But if you want something special, then it's, it's hearing the word and doing it. It's hearing the word and practicing it. It's believing. It's having faith. When you have faith, when you believe that God exists and uh, that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, you must have faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those. There's a place, there's a place of blessing. When you diligently seek him, when you adjust yourself to come to that place to diligently seek him, there's a place of blessing, of special blessings. And he will reward those who come into that place. Praise God. His word is so faithful. So, um, next verse, uh, John 20, verse, uh, verse 26 uh, to 29. Now, I'm going to set, the, set the, uh, the tone here. What happened is, is Jesus has lived, huh? and he was crucified, he was buried, he rose again. Now, there was a moment in time when all the disciples were together in, in, in one room, in the upper room, but Thomas wasn't there. And suddenly, Jesus appeared in the midst of them. And he revealed himself to, to all the disciples, but Thomas wasn't there. So the, later on, uh, when Thomas got there, the disciples are sitting there saying, you're not going to believe this. Jesus rose again. He was here. He appeared to us. And Thomas made the comment, I don't, unless I see it for myself, there's no way I can believe that. And so I pick it up here, verse 26. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Now, I'm just going to pause right there. I'm just going to do a little detour myself. I just a little sub-note here and just say, you know, the doors were locked, and suddenly Jesus appeared before them. And I just, sometimes when these things happen, I think we're getting a hint at what heaven's going to be like. And I seem, I, I just I just kind of believe that when we get to heaven, and I can't point to a chapter and verse and say it's so, but I'm just saying that when we see this, I think in heaven we're going to be able to just, that will be normal life. This will be up here, here, be up here, there. I think that this appearing will be common in heaven <coughs> because I don't think there's going to be cars in heaven to, to get around in. I think we're going to get around this way. But anyway, that's just a, a little opinion and, and, and I'll come back to the, the, the scriptures here. So, suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them and he said, Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hands into the wound of my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. He saw it and he believed it. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. And that, folks, is us. If, if you're a believer... Then Jesus just said, Blessed are those who believe without seeing me, because for 2,000 years since Jesus ascended to heaven, anybody who calls themselves a believer has never seen him, uh, but we believe because of the faith comes from hearing the word and the word of God. People have gone and preached it. We have received the word and we believe. Jesus said, Blessed are you because you believe, even though you didn't see me. And of course, after you believe, we start to experience the presence of God. Uh, we, we experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, it doesn't require faith for our whole life to believe something that we don't know. Once we believe, then we start experiencing God and, and we know in our heart He is. 
there's a place of blessing if you can do what it says. And he says, blessed are those who believe. So we're talking about that place of special blessing. And it comes from a place of obedience. Comes from a place of faith. And it comes from a place of believing. Praise God. So, the last scripture we're going to read. And we're going back to the book of Malachi. Last book of the, of the, Bible, of the Old Testament. And the, the verse we're going to read is uh, Malachi 3.16. Now, another, another little sub-note I'll just make here. 3.16. If you get looking at the different books in the Bible, uh, not all of them, but some of them, you look at 3.16... They tend to, there, there's some significance in some of the books at 3.16. Because we're all, most of us are familiar with John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, here's Malachi 3.16. And so picture, I, I imagine this way, like a quiet room. And there's believers that are talking. It says, then those who feared the Lord spoke with each other. Now, when it says here, those who feared the Lord... We're not talking about people who are scared of, like feared as in scared of God. We're talking about people who trust in the Lord, who trust in God, and they don't want to disappoint Him. They, they, they have a heart's desire to please their Father in Heaven. It's like any obedient child in their Father's house who, who wants to please their, their Father. They, 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 they don't want to disappoint Him. And so when it talks about fearing God, it's, it's a reverential respect. And a desire not to disappoint. So those who feared the Lord spoke with each other. And the Lord listened to what they said. In his presence a scroll of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared him. And always thought about the honor of his name. They will be my people, says the Lord. On the day when I act in judgment, they will be my own special treasure. I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. Then you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. <clears throat> so, those who feared the Lord, and they, they uh, talked about uh, honoring His name. You know, they, they, they feared the Lord, and they always thought about the honor of his name. They, you know, the word talks about us being ambassadors to Christ. And uh, we're supposed to make this gospel of Christianity. We're supposed to make it attractive. So when people see what we have, people want it. And you know what? We're not successful at that all the times. Coming back to the common blessing. When we are just walking according to the natural man, sometimes people say something to me and we get offended and we react. And people who would see that would say, oh, man, I don't want that. I, I don't want anything to do with that. But when we start living up to the standard that Christ has called us to, with love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control, uh, loving our enemies, praying for, the, for those who persecute us, loving those who annoy us, Letting our light shine before men. And if we're consistent in, in meeting that standard that Christ has called us to, that is what makes us attractive. That's when people look at that and say, you know what, I've seen him day in and day out. And they, they're walking in love and they're walking with kindness and they have a gentle word to say to people. They're encouraging. I want what they got. And, and elsewhere in the Bible it says, always be prepared to give an answer to those who ask for the hope that you have. Be prepared to give an answer. Somewhere along the line, somebody's going to see you when you're meeting Christ's standard and you're loving people, and people are going to say, what is it that makes you tick? And you have an opportunity to say, I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. And, and so when you care about the honor of his name, and so Jesus, or like the word says here, that God uh, opened up a scroll and record their names. And he says, then you will see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. And I'm saying, in this, there's a special blessing. So we've seen here that there's a common blessing that falls on everybody, and you, it takes no effort to receive it. But there's a special blessing, and it requires obedience, 
faith, uh, believing, and uh, caring about the honoring of God and, and honoring His name. And you will see the difference. So there will be a time in the last days when we stand before God, there will be a difference between those who believed and those who didn't. So there will be a special blessing, not only for today, but for then and for eternity. So what comes out of all of this? I, I believe that there's two things that come out of it. Um, first of all, we need to be a people that honor God. We need to care about the honor of his name. Therefore, we need to live a life that honors him. We need to live a life uh, that people could see and be thrilled with, um, be impressed with, attracted to, and saying, I want what he's got. Whatever it is that makes them tick, whatever it is they got, I want that. And when we honor God, and we don't honor him by reacting in the flesh, we honor him by meeting the standard that Jesus has set. Jesus has set a standard saying, love your enemies, bless those who persecute you. So we need to honor God in all of our actions. But the other thing we need to do is we need to live with purpose. And if we live our lives with purpose, and, and understanding that our purpose is bringing glory to God's name and honoring him in a visible way, uh, and part of that purpose is when we pray. The very first scripture we read, uh, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. And I'm going to tell you, now, when it says pray, understand Jesus and, and, and God's word encourages us to pray constantly. And um, so here's, here's a point I want to kind of make. I, I, I heard a message from another pastor. So this isn't original with me. I heard it from a, an, another preacher preaching this here, but I embraced it because it made sense to me. Because he was, he was doing a message on prayer, and he said, uh, why, why is it that people don't pray? And, and, and part of it is because they've got this misconception about God's will. Because they believe uh, God's will will be done, and therefore, uh, basically, God's will is etched in stone, and so we can't change it, and therefore, why bother praying? Because whatever God wants, it's going to happen anyway. So therefore, uh, it really, really, really doesn't make any sense to pray. And uh, so what, what the preacher pointed out was two things. One is, the part of God that's unchangeable is his nature. God has unfailing love for people. People, he created people in his image. And uh, so he has tried to make a way. He's tried to reconcile people to himself. He sent Christ to die for everybody's sins. Everybody. Not just those who believe everybody but the only ones who are going to access that forgiveness are the ones who call out the name of God in Jesus in Jesus name and ask for forgiveness and uh, make Jesus Lord declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and then committing yourself to follow after Jesus when you do that you receive all that Jesus bought for you paying the penalty of sin and making you a child of God so the penalty was paid for everybody but he's given each of us a will because again we're, we're created in his image God has a will he created us with a will and he will respect our will the word says that he uh, desires that none should perish it's God's will that none should perish and uh, that all of us would have eternal life but we know that uh, not everybody chooses God uh, elsewhere in the Bible it talks about the, the path to the kingdom is very narrow but the, the, the road to, to destruction is wide a lot of people travel on because a lot of people reject the message of God. They reject it. And when they do that, that hurts God's heart. And uh, because he wanted them in. He wanted them saved. He wanted them in heaven. But they've rejected him. And in so doing, it leads to their destruction. That's not his will. The Bible is very clear about that. His will is that none should perish. So here, here's the thing. His nature does not change. He has unfailing love and he shows mercy to anybody who will ask for forgiveness. Uh, anybody who wants to get close to him, he'll get close to. But his will, okay, and a, 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 another word for God's will, because we think of it as being engraved in stone and not changeable. And uh, But the better word about God's will is God's desire. And it's like, 
he, uh, this preacher made this example. He says, like, we think of the, uh, God's word and God's will as being etched in stone and stuff. Like this. He says, well, but when we uh, get prepared uh, <laughs> for, for the end of our life and we create a last will and testament, uh, a legal document to say, when I pass on, this is what I desire for my assets to happen. And so you, you, you decide that all percentage of stuff will be left to this child and this child and, and perhaps a spouse and, and whatever else. You, you, you've dictated what your desires are, how your assets shall be distributed. But it's a desire. I mean, there are things that can happen that maybe they're not going to be carried out just exactly as you said, for whatever legal reasons might exist in the uh, community where you live. But that's your desire. You've expressed your desire, and that's what they're going to try and carry out as best as they can. Well, same thing with God. God's will. God's will. I mean, we, we pray. God, may your, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we think, okay, may, may, may it be done on earth. So, but we think of God's will as being etched in stone. And in actual fact, so, so the, the example would be like uh, when God called Jonah to go to Nineveh. And, and the wickedness of Nineveh has risen up to heaven. And it's a stench in, in God's nostrils. And he said to Jonah, Go there and preach, because in 40 days, I'm going to destroy Nineveh. And so that's what he declared. Well, if you're familiar with the story of Jonah, he, I mean, Nineveh was the enemy. I, I, I don't want to go there, and he, he headed the other way. Anyway, God took care of that and got the prophet to come back and to go and do what he had called him to do. So Jonah went into Nineveh. He preached the word of God, and those people repented. And they prayed, and God decided, changed his mind, and he didn't destroy Nineveh. He did not destroy, and, and of course, Jonah got all angry. He says, that's why I didn't want to go there, because I knew that's what you would do. I knew you would forgive them if they repented, and they did. They repented, and so God didn't destroy it. We see so many examples in the Word where it says, is, is there somebody who will stand in the gap? Is there somebody who is going to come and pray? Uh, we see that God uh, uh, showed Abraham that I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and Abraham then uh, pleaded and said, but, but if there was 50 righteous people there, would you destroy it? And God said, no, if there's 50 righteous people there, I won't, I won't destroy it. And then he said, oh, and, he, and he pushed, he said, what about 40? And then 30, and then he got it right down to 10. What if, if there's 10 righteous people there, would you destroy it? And he says, no, I won't. Well, as it turns out, there wasn't ten people. The angels went and got Lot and his, his family out, and destruction came. The point being is that when God's will, he decides, when, when wickedness requires judgment, he has will, but there's still the chance people can pray and make a difference. So what we're saying here is as we start talking about God's will, think in terms of God's desire. So therefore, then, should we be praying? Yes. Jesus said, Love those, love, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. But it's not just pray for them. Pray for your church, pray for your family, pray for your children, pray for your grandchildren, pray for your great-grandchildren. Is there a reason to pray? Yeah, because God will move based on your prayers. God will meet your needs. He will, he will adjust, he will change his mind on certain things. As you stand in the gap and you pray, God will honor your prayers as you pray in faith. Does that mean you're going to get everything you absolutely wanted? No, because understand that, that when you start praying for other individuals, their wills are also going to be um, respected. But God is still going to move. He's going to draw them. He's, there's things that God will do to try to bring them in. And, and the more you pray, God will respond to your prayers. So... What I'm suggesting to you is, is that the two points that we want to take out of this stuff, honor God, but also live with purpose. And your purpose isn't just letting your light shine and, and raising the standard to, to meet Jesus, what he's called you to do, but also in your prayer life. Pray as often as you can, pray. Pray for those around about you. Pray for the, the staff and the stuff that you work with. Pray for your neighborhood and your neighbors. Pray for as much as you can to everybody who comes to your mind. Be faithful to pray. Pray for your family, your, your children, uh, your siblings, uh, grandchildren, great 
pray and trust that God will move on your behalf. So what we're talking about there is honoring God and living with purpose. And your purpose is letting your light shine and being prayerful. You know, God is good. God honors his word. And he, he has given us example and said, there's a special blessing. I can lift up the windows of heaven and pour out on you blessings. The blessings are like a downspout in the rain. He says, there's a place. You can, you can experience the common blessing without doing anything. But if you want that special blessing, you need to move. You need to adjust yourself. You need to go to that place that he has uh, identified in his word. He says, there will be a downpour. <laughs> there will be a special blessing when you believe and you exercise faith and, and you do what the word says. As you do these things, honor God. Care about his name. Care about the honor of his name. Live with purpose. Let your light shine. Pray. And, and, and as it says it so, many, so often, pray without ceasing. Pray as often as things come to mind. And, 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 and let me just say this. When, when we say prayers, it does not mean falling to your knees and praying for hours. It doesn't mean even uh, whether you're on your feet or in any kind of position. Uh, it doesn't mean have to be long prayers. It, it just means in your daily walk, when you get a few moments, you, you just say a word of prayer. I mean, it can be as, as you are on your way, on your way doing something, or as often as it just comes to your mind. You, you pray for somebody who God lays in your heart. Just pray, pray, pray incessantly, always giving thanks to God. Give Him thanks for all His goodness and His good plans for you. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask you to listen to the words, and I'm going to ask you to audibly say a hearty amen if you agree with the words of my prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. And Lord, uh, there are times that we have sinned. There are times that we have fallen short. There are times that we have had failures. And uh, we just come before you and uh, we ask for forgiveness. Um, we know that with forgiveness, uh, we are made and cleansed, made white as snow. And, and Lord, we just look for a renewal, a renewal of our heart and spirit. Give us clean hands and a pure heart. We understand that when we are in Christ, we are clothed in, in Jesus' righteousness. And, and when you look at us, you see the righteousness of Christ around about us. We thank you that you have a good plan for our life. We thank you that as we adjust our lives to be in that place of special blessing, that, that we can enjoy your good favor. And that we understand that you have a plan for our lives. And it doesn't matter how old we are, whether we're young or whether we're uh, in middle age or whether we are elderly, that you're not done with us yet and that we can still live to honor your name and we can live with purpose to let our light shine and to pray for people. And Lord, just help us in that endeavor. We thank you for your salvation. We thank you for special blessings. We thank you for bringing us to the place where we are right now uh, and, and recognizing that it's your goodness who brought us to here and knowing that you will take us on. You will take us on from here uh, and you'll bring to completion that which you've begun in us. We thank you for it. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. We ask all this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. This is Bob Manuk from RWM Blue Water Ministry, declaring blessings on you and yours until we meet again. In Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus is coming soon. <laughs>